did I hear something about designing a fish? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, we're 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 designing the behavior behind a secret unannounced fish that may or may not have a uh, sentimental significance to me. Is it the fish on your arm? Yes, it is the fish on my arm. <laughs> Literally 10 seconds after I say it and three different people have already figured out what it is. Yeah, you're a bit low poly um, on account of the fact that Discord doesn't let me full screen both me and or both you and your shared screen. I'm an indie game dev, so low poly works. <laughs> Today we are designing the behavior of a fish in fish game, a very special fish that chat has guessed, but I have not yet said the name of. Uh, it may or may not be tattooed on my arm and be the subject of many studies that I have worked on. And uh, we're going to get to see the behind the scenes, the design process that goes into making fish game and makes the complex behavior of the fish in fish game. Uh, because as an aquarium game, fish game is not as simple as it might seem on the surface. Uh, these fish and even the, you know, the individual species Species have extremely specific behaviors trying to mimic real life you know as much as possible uh, at one point the fish game devs even reached out to me to ask about betta fish and you know their facultative air breathing versus obligate air breathing so they're really going down into the details to make the game as accurate uh, and intricate as possible which is awesome and so we get to see the behind the scenes of that when it comes to adding a new fish to the game so fish game is out yes fish game is out on steam you can you can purchase fish game we are the fish we are working on is not out yet i believe because we are working on the behavior for it this is the debut announcement so would you, uh, like, would you like to introduce yourself oh yeah sure i am i'm gourd i run a shell in the pit um we're a sound design studio mostly uh and i'm a composer on lots of games a few that you might have heard of like. Uh, and then I've done ro both Rogue Legacy games. Uh, I've been doing some Five Nights at Freddy's lately, which has been cool. Oh, um, just a, I'm not like the main composer, but getting to <laughs> getting to write that. some stuff. For it, you don't have to is say that. that. <laughs> How did you decide to make an aquarium game from being a sound design company? I've always wanted to make this game specifically. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've, I was into fish a lot in like late high school, early, early university, well, all the way through university. And uh, then me and my, uh, well, girlfriend at the time, wife now, we moved to South Korea for a couple of years. So I had to get rid of all my aquariums. Then we moved to Vancouver so she could go to film school. And then I wound up also going to film school, but then wound up working in games instead. And yeah, just living in a city and being this busy, I haven't been able to like keep real tanks. So right. I've always wanted this game to exist and I wasn't really satisfied with the, the ones that were out there. So when um, our company had a little bit of money, I, I was like, I think this could be a thing we could do. So I work on that YouTube channel Smarter Every Day and I texted him and I was like, hey, if I made a game, would you like tweet about it? <laughs> and, and, and he was like, call me. <laughs> so I called him and he... He liked the idea too, so he was like in. Uh, so then we did it. We did it real properly. Um, we found developers, Aaron and Ryan, here in Indiana, um, and we've been working on it for like almost five years, I think. It's been a long time. That's crazy, yeah. and it's only been out now what a few months. Yeah, we just released in October, and we're still working on it full time. That's cool. Did it uh, make you want to do more game development, or is this just like a, you know, I have I don't an really... idea. I. Well, I think this is the kind of game we can work on forever as long as we can make enough money to keep it going. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have another like great design idea in me. I do have one other one that I think would be funny. Um, but uh, well, I'll just say it because like making games is so hard. People can steal the idea. I don't care. <laughs> I want to I make, make an invasive species game. Ooh. Where it's not realistic, but it's like you're trying to manage invasive species with other invasive species and it just like flies out of control. <laughs> okay. Like a uh, battle simulator, but with invasive species. Invasive species. Yeah. Feel free. Get us started. What are, what are we doing? Let me clean the glass. Okay. Want, want nice clear views. Does the glass our, get algae on it? Process. Yeah. Okay. It, take, it takes a long time. Like, okay. but if you, if you get like an ammonia bloom, 
then the the algae will uh, come in pretty quick. I'm looking over uh, at my 55 gallon with the the algae growing on the, the left side of the tank because I have not wiped it in a while. Yep. That, yeah. That, that, well, that's one <laughs> one thing that like we don't have quite like popping off yet, but I want it to be working eventually. Is like like how algae eaters can like do a pretty good job of like keeping a whole tank clean. Yeah. But since, yeah. but since our time scale is like way faster than real time, and we right. don't want algae eaters just zipping all over the tank, uh, we have to yeah, that makes figure sense. out how to make that work. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have an apple snail, which is just an invasive snail that I caught on accident one day and brought it home. And he is great. He full time is on the glass, but he's just one little man, so he can't get it all done on the fifty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know people have asked about inverts in the game. I imagine that's a whole different level. Inverts, we think snails we can do, um, event like probably a lot sooner than other things. Right. But uh, as you'll see, like from the system that we have here, and maybe I can put together the, uh, or I can throw up the animation system at some point too. Is we've basic we've tried to build like these pretty global systems, and they've taken a long time. And these global systems really are just for fish, right? Um, based on the like, because fish are sine waves. Like the fins move in sine waves, the body moves in sine oh. waves. Whereas, when okay. we're talking, when we're talking shrimp and and uh, freshwater lobsters and things like that, all those legs, okay, uh, will not work with our systems. It's and even use. like there's, so you're saying high school trigonometry had a use? Oh, not for me. I'm not doing it. Oh, I'm, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it did Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan's doing the math. I'm just the I'm just the fish fan. And, uh, uh, yeah, I would not have thought of that. I would have just figured you animated it frame by frame. That's most smart, save effort. No, wave. yeah, it's all yeah. Everything's all our animations are math. Um, all of our like fish coloration is mostly math as okay. well. So that's what allows that, us to like. Yeah, a lot more freedom that way, right? Yeah, more freedom, and we can just put so much more stuff in the game because it right. doesn't use as much uh, CPU. Let's let's spawn your pal here. All right, let's spawn my pal. So these are my like, debug controls. Okay. And here we go. Bridal shiner. There's a male no. and a female. There's a male and a female. I don't know if there's any like dimorphism that we maybe haven't taken care of yet. Um, um in breed, so that's a, that's an interesting thing. Not a lot of aquarium fish do this, but North American fish very much so color up yeah. for breeding season. Yeah. Um. So it, outside of breeding season, no. Generally, they, okay. they're identical. But I don't know how you how you would handle that. Oh my yeah. god, I see him. Yeah, there he is. Oh my so god, right so now, cute. I went out and zeroed out all the a lot of the traits. So okay, he's oh a blank god, slate. He's so cute. Just hanging out. The eyes never <laughs> stop moving, which is I know I don't. Some people could call it a bug, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh, it's because the game the game's paused. So uh, okay. things are going. The eyes keep going even when the game's paused, which is a little <laughs> creepy. General, we'll start with our general variables. Okay. So this is just um, like I am translating years of knowledge of the fish into numbers for you. Yeah, pretty, basically, uh, okay. and probably you know numbers that aren't as exact as you want them to be. Yeah, you're gonna um, give me some sense of scale on these things. Yeah, yeah. I mean the so the the max size is that is. That is accurate. Lifespan's right. accurate. We've, okay. Um, letters might be a bit small, so we've we've got our max size set to five point six centimeters. Does yeah. That sound about right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's a big boy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we we're, we're gonna build in some like variation in like max size. Right now, all like fish will just grow to the max size. Makes sense. But uh, it's not gonna be too hard. Uh, maybe Ryan's already done it actually to make it so you can have you know runs of the litter and and stuff like that to give give things a little more individualization right um we've got our lifespan set to two years sounds about, about right. right uh juvenile duration we've got set to 0. 0.1 years so, so is months. that when something goes from very small to normal sized i think so yeah because we don't we don't have fry per se yet but we've got right. like baby fit i yeah. i would say it's probably a little bit longer yeah i don't know i guess can you do 0. 0.25 three months sure Three months sure. sounds about right for me. I mean, they're not reaching full like sexual maturity, but they're decent sized at that point. And then we've got all our swimming stuff. Um, we've got this. We can have like density oh, wow. of school. Yeah, schooling. I was wondering about this. So this is like their happiness based on, you know, how many of their same species they're with. That's the minimum desired school size. So we actually have like how close they like to shoal. Okay. Um, as well. So if they tight, if they sh if they school really tight, or if they're more of a loose oh, thing. Oh, I see. And this is this is more um, 
yeah, less exact. We just have like words describing that. It does have like a number variable as well, but okay. it's just a slider. So are they tight schoolers, loose schoolers? Uh, they're fairly tight. The interesting thing is yeah. they don't school a lot, but when they uh, do okay. school, it's in large groups, pretty tight and with another species. Um, Oh, very similar looking species. Yeah. But typically in, you know, the average stream, I would say they don't really school much. The only reason that they'd be grouped is uh, because they l prefer vegetation. And so other okay. bridal shiners will be seeking out the same vegetation. So they so bridal shiners like ex they they will school with each other, but they'll also school with other fish or they exclusively are like loners who school with other fish. I, yeah, they're pretty much loners who exclusively school with other fish. I don't think I've ever seen a school oh, that's interesting. of bridles on their own. Okay, we might need to like figure out a new mechanic for that. Because okay. I think they're probably set to school with family right now. Right. Um, so yeah, then I mean, their minimum like desired said, school size. Yeah. They, they will be in large groups of bridles, but there will also be large amounts of the other fish iron colors in there okay. as well. That's the only time that I see a large group of bridles. Otherwise, they're pretty okay. just, you scoop through like some vegetation in a bridal stream and you'll get like four different shiner types. Okay, interesting. Oh, they're, they're gonna be really lonely in the game. <laughs> we don't have any other shiners. <laughs> That's all right, they can, so we... uh, there's some stuff that looks similar enough, you could trick them. Yeah, sure, we can hang out with the neons. And the Danios. And so the school size, like this is something that is much more, applies way more to uh, actual, like fish that are kept in aquariums a lot, I guess, because that's right. something that people want to know is like, how many do I need for them to be happy? Yeah. Like, do we even, do we even know the statistic for how many well, fish they would like in a school? Funnily enough, I have bridles in the 55 gallon next to me. Oh, you got them. Um, I do. Yep. I have bridles and oh, iron cool. colors. <laughs> I have their, I, I, I remember, I remember you were, yeah, I think last time we talked, you were going to get them, but yeah, I great. had an empty 55 gallon and I was planning on putting some in it. Now it's, it's filled with a, a mixed shiners. Um, but what I will say is I had, I think I had four bridles and less of everything else. So it was like three iron colors or something like that. And it did yeah. feel like the fourth was getting excluded. Like it feels like they want as oh. much of their own species as another species. I don't, I don't okay. know what the actual thing is for it, but yeah, you could do three. I think that makes sense. Just three. that's probably the, I'm probably the only person to ever keep them in an aquarium. So <laughs> see, that suggests to me that they might like, like a bit more personal space. Yeah. So this is similar to Juva. I think this is like if other fish come up to them, whether or not they're going to like, um, right. make, make room for themselves. Yeah, I think they would. Um, and here's where we'll actually start seeing some differences in real time. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is really cool to see all of the various variables that you get to modify. And Brian's built a yeah, pretty cool. System. Programming this to get it set up so that it's you know you can do this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. Like you're not you're not in the code. You you actually have like a, a HUD to work with, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan's built a nice user interface so like dummies like me can yeah can apply my whatever knowledge of fish to make them look do things I want them to do. So yeah, we can see they're all just like hanging in space right now. <laughs> yes. Their swim speed. So we've got basically a minimum swim speed for when they're being Id idly moving around. Right. Um, and uh, then we've got their max swim speed. Okay. Uh, uh, when the, yeah, when they're like sitting in vegetation, they're they're pretty close to still. They'll like they'll move yeah. around a little bit. Yeah, I'd say very slow. They'll move around okay. like a very tiny bit to kind of forage. Um, but that being right. said, when they're when they're spooked, they they dart. They are shiners, they so they're pretty fast. They're not yeah. like well, I, I, that's where, this is where like I don't know the scale because if we're talking all yeah. fish, right? Very fast would be yeah, like a mean, sailfish or a tuna. Exactly. I was going to say they're like <laughs> over a hundred kilometers an hour. Or something yeah, they're not ones. that fast, um, but in the, it's, in the I think it's game, relative to their size is how I think we have it set. They're pretty damn fast then. Probably faster than anything else you have in the game. Shiners are, are well adapted oh, okay. to rapids and such. Okay, we will put it to what's fast as it goes. Um, and then we have a uh, variable for twitchiness, and I assume that they are a shiner, so they're quite twitchy. What does twitchy mean in this case? It's like, it's just like how much they how much they, well you'll be able to see the difference it's like uh you can see it best from the top down that's why okay. i've changed the view here so right now it's set to nothing and then if we move it up we should start seeing 
some some more twitchies oh. have. Yeah, I think that's more of a live bearer thing for the most part. Yeah, I would I would put it on the lower side. Uh, then we have this is less for behavior and just more for their happiness um, sure. within the game. Do you think they have a minimum tank size? Yeah, probably. I well considering you wouldn't probably just want one on its own. I'd probably say a twenty. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, ten gallon is a bit small for a, a fish that prefers schooling. moving waters and yeah, schooling and such. Uh, pH levels. pH they actually max. have a, they have an interestingly high tolerance for uh, basic water and are very oh, okay. very intolerant of acidity. Oh really? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, and then it's very interesting because the the fish that they'll school with is very highly tolerant of acidity and not of basic. Um, but yeah, no, they they can't tolerate acidity at all. New Jersey's really interesting in that way, where the southern half of New Jersey is acidic waters, the Pine Barrens. The northern half okay. is pretty normal, and then we have some very basic headwaters, and uh, they, they like those headwaters. So I mean. I, I'm trying to think of an exact number. Probably like 1.5 away from the, the uh, median in terms of the basic scale, and then in terms okay. of acidity, I, I would almost like just five. do. The, I would almost just do the middle in terms of acidity. So 5.5 would be the minimum. Is that? Am I right? Is the center? I'm trying to remember the center. Is the center, is the center seven, or is seven just like usually a good place for fish? I can't. I, th I, I think can't the remember. center is seven. And then yeah. lower number is more acidic, so it would probably be acidic. like oh, right? my high school. My high school. Uh, <laughs> you're you're the biologist. You'll know. Well, well, hold on, because if I'm wrong, this is I look really bad. When was the last time I worked with a pH scale? All right, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm I've always lived in places with really nice water, so I've never even tested fish no, no, uh, okay. pH. I, I'm right. I'm right. Al alkaline is high numbers. Okay, so we, I would do like go. six point five to eight. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, oh, that's about six, six is the center according to chat. No, neutral is seven point five. What are you guys on about? Six is almost a freaking tomato. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Uh temperature tolerances. Yeah, uh, well they are wild fish and in a temperate climate, so they can they can they can get pretty low, you know, as much as New Jersey gets, which they can go down to zero degrees and New Jersey Jeez. can go up to I don't even know. New Jersey can go up to 100. The water wouldn't probably get more than like 75. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say probably between like 10, 15 to 75. And this is a fun one because you're one of the only people that have them in tanks. Right. Uh, what would you say from your observations, their uh, vertical position like preferences are? The or are bottom. they more, they, they're bottom? Yeah, okay. they, they like to forage amongst the substrate. So they're, they're cool. gonna chill along the bottom. Awesome. So you can see they've all just like gone to the bottom now. <laughs> and they're in the vegetation, which looks very yeah. right for a bridal shiner. They love vegetation. Yeah, awesome. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, this... they look so they just they're in the right place. Like if I put if I dropped a bunch of bridal shiners in this tank and gave them twenty four hours, this is where I would expect them to be. That's so cool, man. <laughs> I'm this this is going well. <laughs> uh uh, so yes, yeah, so, okay. So, but they'll probably go as they'll go up to the middle, though. They can go everywhere. Yeah, they'll, they can go everywhere. They'll go to the surface yeah. if there's food up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the fish in the game will go anywhere for food. I think this is kind oh, of okay. like where they'll, where they'll hang out if they're doing their wandering right, and right. stuff. Are they at all aggressive? I'm assuming. No. Uh, no, but, not really. Shiners typically um, employ the strategy of just like. I throw my eggs in the water, you throw your sperm in the water, and we hope they touch each other. There's not like yeah. a whole lot of territoriality. Should we make them aggressive for like a second? <laughs> you could, yeah. I mean, <laughs> essentially, yeah, they, they find the they find the mate and then they go like three, two, one, go, and hope that they timed it well and then they move on. They might start fighting at some point here. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, there oh, we go. Yep, there you go. Chasing each other off. Yep. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Kind of back down before they kill each other. So that's all our general vari variables. That's like the, let's say the majority of the stuff. That's like the, this is where we get like the main vibe for. Right. For no, yeah. Thing. I mean, just from how they started to how they're acting and where they're at now just changed much, very well in favor of accuracy, I would say. Well, cool. well. Cool. Um, then we've got all these other behaviors. So these are. 
a lot of the time kind of uh some of them are like stress reactions and and a lot of them we might not know for bridal shiners yet i think but a lot, but also other fish will probably behave a lot of the same way so like yeah. hunger reactions like if they're hungry and the we oh, have wow. the same we have the same thing for every one of these like you can you can add scratch itch to hunger if you want okay that wouldn't make sense right um we've got yawning we've got peck surfaces peck surfaces so i'd probably would yeah i would i would put agree. that one in i would say under peck hunger surfaces. yep um i would agree i also think they'll eat plants <laughs> I'm pretty yep, sure mine have torn apart my plants when I was away for a weekend, so. Awesome. That's going to be fun for players, I think, because this will be the only fish that looks like this, I think, that eats plants, because, like, none of our tetras are eating plants or anything. Gotcha. Um, so that'll be a surprise for people to see that their plants are getting eaten, I think. <laughs> oh, no, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we kind of have sliders for, like, how often they choose to do that thing. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean they're they're foraging constantly, so the whole pecking we'll thing I think put you pack, could put yeah, pack up pretty high. Pretty high, yeah. Cool. Anything else we want under so you can see that one's bitten a plant here, so that leaf rising up. Oh my. Um <laughs> jumping. No. Not yeah. their thing. Random digging. I mean, like I said, they yeah? do, they do dig through the substrate a lot. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. This is turning out to be a much more interesting fish than I anticipated. Honestly. I mean, the, it's interesting because this is the only shiner you have. If we were like, yeah. okay, now let's do a different Natropus, you know, something in the same genus, everything would be the exact same. It would get very right, uninteresting right. very quick. But because you're doing a totally okay, cool. different group of fish. Yeah, you can, so you can see they're all digging now. Um, I think it just, it triggers the one that you set last. Right. So that you can see it, uh, see it in action for testing. Right. Oh, would that be for hunger though, or just like a miscellaneous? Um, I mean, they would probably do it more when hungry, but definitely miscellaneously. Okay. And then ailments, like if they're sick, sick or stressed. Well, that can be this one was on the type of sickness. On the, on the type of ailment, we've got our sickness update coming up. Um, oh wow! Okay. In the not not too distant future. Oh, they're getting hungry. <laughs> Come on up. You're in the designing, <laughs> you know. GUI or whatever, and you still have to be yeah. them. Yeah, we like, yeah, we can design while playing the game, which is like, <laughs> yeah, not something cool. I even expected we'd be able to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's leave that one alone for now. Let's wait for the sickness update. Stress. So we got fear, like maybe forward movement, jumping, yeah. like if they're being chased. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they'll run if they're being chased. So you could do forward sure. movement, definitely. Probably. Would they, do they do much cave cave hiding, cave hiding, or are they? Um vegetation hiding not cave though they don't really associate yeah. with rocks i thought we had a vegetation maybe we only have hundred hover under floaters okay um they'll, they'll just go wherever they probably can yeah, I would yeah they just yeah. yeah they're just not really associated with rocks they'd prefer plants <clears throat> right free there i would assume the water conditions are terrible they'll go to the top of the tank oh yeah yeah they, they can they're yeah they can choose to breathe there and actually like this is one i don't necessarily haven't you know seen that much because i tried not to let, let my own tanks get too nasty mm -hmm. like what are other than like there's glass skating which i think they'll all we don't have to add that all fish will just do that mm -hmm. uh so yeah maybe it's just free there right now for water conditions and the rest might just be global to all fish yeah i mean what does flare mean is that constant or is that flare is that's like uh flares for like aggression okay when the, like two betas are facing off or okay. two cichlids are facing off. Yeah, I was thinking of like the operculum, the the cheek flap. They did because that the people call that flaring when that thing's like out. They, do, they oh, do and that. when it's yeah inflamed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a thing. Yeah, when yeah. We don't have oxygen. We don't have that, and we'd have to <laughs> we'd have to reanimate every single fish. No, to no add that's it. not. It's not a. It's not a requirement. <laughs> We might be able to, we, maybe we can add like a coloration thing with the sickness update so that oh, yeah. it's like- You definitely it should. It becomes red, know. red yeah. and inflamed. Right, ammonia burn. You definitely should in that regard. If there's an ammonia bloom, have uh, gills go red to some degree. Yeah, well, okay. We'll look into that. That's, I wonder, yeah. That's like the wonder. most common way that it's diagnosed ammonia burn is red gills, so. Cool, and then we can add uh, some miscellaneous things just like when they're hanging out. Right. Uh, random, random movement is like a good one for small fish. We can add more pecking surfaces so yep. that they're just doing it even more all the time, even when they're not hungry. <laughs> yep. 
um, following that will like this is more for later once we're getting breeding happening. Okay. Um, but if it, it is also just kind of sometimes a fun thing to add if they're to give fish a bit more more interaction, but yeah. only if it's realistic. I no, yeah. I, I think it makes sense. I mean, like I said, they will minorly school when there's other other fish around. Right. So I think it makes right. sense. Um, oh right, we have random digging. We can do it like anywhere or only in dark places. Um, and they can also like go all over the place and do it, or they might just like pick one spot and dig that one spot. Uh, I would say they go all over the place. Rest time. I not, don't know. Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> they, they, really, they really like, I mean, I'm looking at them right now and they are digging through the substrate. It's just kind of their thing, so. Okay, that's awesome. And I don't think they would have any preference for dark locations, so. Right, well, we've designed a fish. Holy I crap. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's it. They're done. Um, that's cool. So when you go through this process with not, you know, a, a fish, not this fish, how do you typically make these decisions? Usually, ba like, based on my own knowledge of having kept fish, and then as is becoming more and more the case as we're getting into, you know, fish I haven't kept, I'll often just, like, go on YouTube. Like, a lot of the time, people just have long long videos of their tanks. True. Um, and uh, we uh, will just, like try to figure out what they do read some blogs right. um aaron's doing most of the behavior design these days and aaron is just like a very very thorough researcher okay. um aaron has a bunch of physical books uh as well and then yeah we'll be continuing to update behavior improve on it uh not as like major updates necessarily except for like breeding and, and things right um yeah I'm like, excited but these are that. yeah these are our main these are our main globals at the moment gotcha yeah, I mean, when um, breeding comes about, I don't know the the how realistic it is. Actually, what you could probably do is just so you don't have to reanimate anything, just darken the male like color palette, just like put a yep. shadow on it, basically, because that's all it yep. is. Is they they just get dark. Yeah, I think we have I think we have the technology for that because we have we fish get like pale when they're feeling sick. Right. Already. Yeah, so. To the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that way you don't have to, you know, draw anything new. The males can just yeah. darken when they want to breed. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Then we, when we, then when we get salmon in, they can. Oh my god! <laughs> <Start to break. laughs> they can grow a beak, a beak, and start degrading. Yeah, cool. I can show you the animation system as well because we haven't, like, these have been generally done, but not, um, not to the, like, we've got more options for how how they can look while they're swimming. Is this Blender? No, this is not. I'm stupid. No, this is, uh, this is unreal. Yeah. Wow. Category. Yeah, so there there they are. I think Aaron's already set it up, so it's probably already doing, like, pretty decent. Right. Um, so we've picked our species. We're on defaults, which is where we want to be. Um, so this is the coloration stuff. I'm not going to touch that. Aaron's done a nice job. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, but we can, oh, I can touch it. I like I don't have to change anything. I'm not going to I'm going to I'm not going to push these changes. I'm going to like redo them all all later before we push. But okay. so we can like oh, well, scroll through all our coloration. Definitely on the gold side, yeah. And so we've got like these multiple layers of coloration that we can do. Right. Uh, Ooh, oh yeah. Is, yeah. Holy crap, you could make some cool shiners we chose it we chose a one on the paler side <laughs> yeah just seeing that like at the red belly you could do some red belly days those things are gorgeous yeah that's cool it's cool to see the system and we've got a uh, scales so we can adjust our like scale scale uh width okay and height My like God. how big you want the gaps be to be so for like um uh like arowana you know they the the gaps like appear large even like scales are always overlapping for the most part but right and uh and it's it's also stylized so it's like not supposed to be right uh, exact yeah this one's cool so like you're able to clear how how far you want the scales to go up onto the face oh yeah that is quite cool yeah wow yeah i mean the customizability you have in a like not you just going through the code is crazy yeah, well, we're hoping someday we can release a version of this to users. Where they can just do it? Into... Oh my god. Yeah. I, I just go right. through and make every shiner. <laughs> insert insert their own models, things like that. That's awesome. 
Um, what was the fin mask? Oh yeah, this is uh, you can watch on the tail here. Okay. Oh. How the yeah. color can bleed it. There are definitely more dramatic examples. Right. Um, this is not doing much right now. Right. Um, and then there's the scale fin stretch, which I think is also not doing much on this fish at the moment. Uh, what's the distortion intensity? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So we've got these coloration, basically sort of like math, math mathematics swatches. Uh huh. And you can control how much they're distorted. Okay. That so that that allows us to give give like vertical stripes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very not like, distorted on a bridal shiner. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's very so like cleanly could, like yeah, top half, bottom yeah. half. There are, it's fun. Everything you're, I know you're designing this with the intention of working with aquarium fish, but every feature yeah. you're showing me, I'm imagining like how useful it would be for a specific shiner. Like the random yeah. like scales everywhere is a black nose dace thing. They just get their coloration spread randomly about their body. So it's very cool. That's cool. Uh, so that's all for that. And then you, of course you can do the tail stuff. Right. Number of spines, like how many. Do they have a lot of spines? Oh my the god, you can, do, you can do hyper specific. <laughs> if you want to be hyper specific, we can be hyper specific. It's not, yeah, it's not numbered necessarily. It's just more visual. You just but we you eyeball could, it. But see, you could visually number it because the anal fin should have nine. Have... Oh, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. We have more, way more than that right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need to add one more. <laughs> and nine. There you go. Wow. Now, cool. now it's a very accurate bridal shiner. Yeah. <laughs> Got the correct anal. At, now at the, at the, the expense of the tail maybe being off, but yeah, yeah probably. The 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 way the rays are shaped on the tail is odd. They because they they radiate from a from a center point. If that makes sense. Yeah. They yeah. Don't, they don't yeah, typically just go in like a straight line. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The map. The math is too hard. <laughs> okay. Yep. No, that that's understandable. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you can actually have them end before the end of the tail as well, if you want. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, end of the fins. To to a light degree, I would say that would be accurate, especially for the cool. for the caudal fin. Yeah. Uh, spines fade. Oh yeah. So we can have them nicely fade as well, which I think would be nice. Yeah. What is is spines referring to the lines? Yeah. I see how the lines kind of fade. They fade okay. out now. All right. Sorry. Yeah. It difference in terminology. Those are not technically spines. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. What's the technical rays? There rays. Are, uh... So there are spines, and uh, some fish will have like some spiny ones, and then some rays, soft rays, spiny rays. Like um, okay. if you know sunfish, they're like you know all around North America. They they have two yeah. dorsals that are connected, so they have a spiny dorsal and a soft dorsal. And then oh, some fish will have like one spine and then a bunch of soft rays and all that. Yeah. It's interesting. I remember we got a sun, sun fish by accident at the pet store I worked at once. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you remember like the, the fin, they have like a weird double dorsal fin and it's split between yeah, spiny and, and soft. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. I am trepidatious to mess with this too much, but <laughs> so this is adjusting that you can adjust the angle of the pattern. Okay. Um, and might not be one of the patterns we're using a lot right now. Right. So I, I, honestly, I don't even want to touch it in case I <laughs> go, go, go somewhere I can't get yeah, don't, don't touch something that I'm causes very, an issue. I'm very, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not pushing these changes. Aaron, I'm not pushing these changes. <laughs> I was doing too much with that. Okay, here's animation. This one's fun. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the rigidity, rigid, rigidity of the front of the yep. body. I think that's very accurate. Yeah. I don't know if that's on purpose for this fish or if that's just general to your animation, but no, that's that's probably on purpose. Right. Um, yeah. Because if you do like live got... bearers, they're like their tail. Oh my god, their tail yeah. will go like basically will bend at a basically ninety degree angle as they swim. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the rear end flap amount. We've yep. got the lateral <laughs> rear, lateral body. Movement. Rear end flap amount is a great variable lateral name. Body. <laughs> Offset uh, the rear end flap offset, so this kind of like makes it twist. Okay. Um, which I don't <laughs> think we want. Yeah. Um, we want it probably pretty, pretty symmetrical. Yeah. Um, and being like a minnow-like fish, we've got the animation speed up pretty fast, but you can also like slow it way down. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, and to, to test when you're animation animating. So like if this is kind of like how they look when they're just hanging out. Right. Um, and if they so if they do that a lot, we might want to bump a few things up, move a few things down. Um, whereas if they're swimming all the time, you might we might do the design like up here. So we're right. just trying to keep in our heads what what these fish are going to be up to and then designing the animations to to match it correctly. Gotcha. But we try to I think a lot of the time we just design for sort of max. And then specifically, we've got the tail animation. So the amplitude can get real Jesus crazy. <laughs> Once once we get once we get like fancy goldfish and I was stuff. Say, this easy. is like a, it looks like a guppy thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's great on the guppies, it's great on our betas. Um <laughs> we've got the tail wavelength, which is cool. So Whoa. that like again doesn't make sense for this fish. Oh my gosh. Uh if I slow it down it'll be we'll be able to see it better. But so you can see how there's basically it adds more <laughs> it adds more nodes to the sine wave we were talking about before. Right. Math. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, I can actually see the sine wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot where all this stuff was. It doesn't matter. It's, oh no, these were these were down here. We're not pushing changes. <laughs> we're not pushing any changes. <laughs> oh my gosh. What have we done? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That would look... Uh, this is so good. In a... Uh, what's that called? Like an animation. Like a Nemo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's what this looks like. I think the tail mask location is. Oh yeah, so this is where where the tail flaps start. So that rigidity you were talking about. Oh yeah. I think yeah. this should be more visible, so it moves up the fish. Yeah, yeah. You so definitely we want, want it pretty far back. Yeah, there's actually so there's a whole there's a whole science to fish locomotion, and uh, it's really cool. If you, I don't know if you've ever seen the videos, you may have looked at some of them where they'll have fish swim and then they use like the long exposure effect to look at how the you know the back half of the fish moves through the water and you can see yeah, yeah. You know, stuff like eels they're just basically making like a sine wave through the water and then totally. a, like a minnow like a shiner like this would really it's close to a straight line with just like a little bit of back and forth in the caudal fin right so it is it's it's behaving much more like a boat motor on the back <laughs> yes yeah yeah uh we've got our pectoral fins right. which on this fish with, on this fish, I'm happy with like there are some fish like we have to we're hoping to fix the pectorals okay because they kind of kind of elbow down right flap speed again with will change with um, swim intensity right so if we're at max speed. However, this is another thing that I'm hoping to update sometime because I know with most small fish, well most fish when they're going really fast, the pectorals just flatten against their bodies. Correct. Um, but that's not what we have at the moment, so it seems intuitive to non-superfish people to just have the fins go faster when they're faster. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. And I'm sure there are species that do that. In my, in my uh, experience, if you have a torpedo-shaped body, you become a torpedo when you're swimming fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas, yeah, a fancy goldfish is not going to do that. No, a <laughs> fancy goldfish will flap hard. <laughs> Yeah, and this this is the angle flap angle parenthesis for weird fish only. <laughs> but so you can make, so you can oh, adjust the angle of how they the, like. Oh. We, but you could make. Uh, this is so crazy. When you show me things again, I've said this already, but like I'm thinking of a fish that this works yeah, on, yeah, yeah. like a frog fish or a hand fish, which I don't know if you know what those are. They're the weirdest they looking do. things. That's what yeah, that they're looks gonna like walk to along me. the walk yeah. along the floor. Yeah, he looks they're like he's walking along the substrate. <laughs> yeah, they're saltwater though, aren't they? They are saltwater. Yes, there yeah. are there are freshwater fish that walk along the substrate though. If you yeah. got like uh, gobies or mud skippers or something. Yeah, so we had that. I think just in the middle for normal fish usually, um, but it it also we use it on our in the, with our arowanas. Okay. So they kind of their their pectorals kind of just sort of hang down. Right. In a sort of odd way, they don't really use their pectorals. At, ton um uh lateral angle just uh, do they hold their fins forward do they hold them backwards okay um flap arc size is like do they <laughs> do they do they really wag them or do they keep things uh, gotcha uh, yeah uh fin stiffness so we can make them real floppy what the? <laughs> i'll slow it down again so it doesn't look as nuts <laughs> see the flop a bit yeah yeah clearly yeah, yeah. So that's that's nice for um, again for betas and floppier fish. Yeah. Keep this one quite stiff. 
Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I would say quite so. Uh, and then we have an offset, which is I think more um, like they can use both their they can they can do that. <laughs> Should, <laughs> I don't know many fish that do that, but they can. Oh, where is I'm I'm basically they're are out they, of are rhythm. They, are they doing yeah? Are they doing the like front crawl or are they doing the butterfly? Oh, interesting. The out of rhythm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it might just Mo be live bears, like mosquito yeah, fish and stuff. Most, yeah, most fish are out of rhythm. Right. I'll have to check out some mosquito fish and see if, yeah, if there are any that air to the uh, in rhythm side. That's the only thing I can think of. It's very cool because it's like you drag a bar one direction and then the fish yeah. looks different to me like if i you know yeah. if i suspension of disbelief i take away like the scales and i can see the black on the nose just looking yeah. at the fins move back and forth i see like a different species as you adjust yeah. the bars uh yeah we'll have to like keep getting your ideas <laughs> i should just we should just throw you a throw you a build <laughs> or not, not, not like a or a, a just a get you on the repo um <laughs> Now, uh, yeah, this is our last section, which okay. I, I think we're doing okay for timing. We've got breath oh, intensity, so like how hard, how hard they they tend to breathe. Um, right. Like you can have them just mouth closed all the time. <laughs> um, I'm trying to th think of what fish would just show no motion of breathing. Uh, mola mola. They have no yeah. muscle to close or open their mouth. It's just constantly agape. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I wonder. So could we do breathing? I'm I'm wondering if our system would even be able to handle that. Yeah. If it's just. I think if the mouth range. Yeah. The mouth. Yeah. The mouth is just yeah, open and, and never moves. It's just stuck at the size that it's at. Whatever. That that thing's not going in our game, so we're we're safe. <laughs> so yeah. Why don't you add we the have, largest? We have big that, tanks. That. We have we we have big tanks, but. <laughs> I think it's the what the heaviest bone or no the largest bony fish no heaviest bony fish I think heaviest yeah, yeah, yeah heaviest. heaviest as i remember those things are incredible yeah they're um, odd they show up here in new jersey which is it's so interesting really? yeah growing up you like think of a lot of these things you see in nature documentaries as like foreign you know yeah like, like hawaii yeah it must be somewhere yeah. distant but no mola mola wash up in new jersey uh and then the mouth range which can be real hilarious <laughs> yeah if you got really like a large jaw on the you know yeah um <laughs> and then we can also just go to like what's their full so you can set the mouth range, or yeah, just oh, yeah, debugging. Yeah, like, so you had it. Their mouth. Your game, your game could handle it. Open mouth with no uh, no breath. Well, it says debug, so I think this is for testing purposes. Ah, only. damn. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem like it would be too too hard to add if we ever get to mola mola, but that'll. Be if for good. some reason, you are doing open Equal. ocean <laughs> tanks, ten billion <laughs> gallon tanks. Yeah. When CPUs are so good that you could just recreate the entire ocean in fish game. I'm friends with the I'm friends with the Dan Dixon who makes Universe Sandbox and like he fully plans on doing that kind of thing. That's crazy. Just like, he wants he wants his game to be a, a simulation of almost everything. That's awesome. It's, uh, it's very very ambitious. You have to, yeah you have to be extremely efficient in coding I imagine. To they had get some. That I level. worked on the game brief. I worked on the game game uh, for a little while, and. Yeah, that they were like the smartest people ever. <laughs> yeah, like they they have a really hard time hiring people because they're like, you have to have like a degree in astrophysics, <laughs> and you need to know how to use Unity. Yeah, that's a that's <laughs> um, a small or like list. doctorates. <laughs> it was like a lot of doctorates and stuff. I was I was sitting in on those like, I was sitting in on the the meetings, and I had just no idea what anyone was talking about. Um, <laughs> That's why I only worked on the game briefly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's it. I'm gonna stop this one. So that's that's it. That's it. For uh, we have created we've designed the fish. fish. Yeah. So so well, when uh, does the fish show up in the game? Uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's gonna be the, in there on uh, Monday. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. We've got a we've got an update coming up on Monday, and you saw the female fish in the. Drop down there. We're gonna be adding a bunch of female fish as well. All right. Um, no, no breeding yet, but they will have. You know, they'll their behaviors are set to behave like uh, females do. People, whether like them or not, you can attempt beta sororities. Oh. And it should be. We're hoping it will be as you know, like they're they are 
controversial, so they're not <laughs> always going to work in the game either. Is the goal right? Um, you, know, you have to pick the right the right fish with a certain level of uh, uh, passivity, yeah, so that everybody gets along. Yes, there are there are aggressive females. It is a a little bit of a myth that you just put the females together and they always get along. One of the things I I will this is way off topic, but when I was talking to an ichthyologist that I was working with one time, uh, we were talking about why I don't know if you know about uh, tonic immobility in sharks. Do you know what that is? Um, I don't think so, unless it's something I know, but I don't know that word for. Right. So if you flip a shark upside down, it just turns its brain off. Like it can't move. Yes, it can't I think. Yes. Yeah. So it's tonic immobility. And that's, that's an adaptation so that males can, you know, breed with females easier because as my ichthyology professor in college said, um, trying to have sex underwater with no arms is really hard. So they have, <laughs> you know, they can make the females still. But the interesting thing about that, that people don't really talk about is the males have tonic immobility too. Um, right. But that's, it's never absolutely used in nature. And it, it's basically because there is such a small, small difference in terms of genetics between a male and a female of a species. It's basically just like, if you imagine like binary code, it's like one zero flipped to a one during the, you know, the development process as an embryo that decides the sex of the fish. And so really right. other than that, like the chromosomal, you know, makeup, uh, males and females are near identical, so it's fully possible to me that aggression is just coded into the species, and females just yeah. do it sometimes. You know, better females will do it with no idea why they're doing it. Yeah. Well, isn't it isn't the reason that we hiccup is because we used to have gills? I don't know. Like I've heard a lot of reasons for just hiccups. Go back so far. But yeah, <laughs> I did. I I read it somewhere that seems reputable at some point. Yeah, but... I think I think in general. That's like not, nothing is 100% confirmed on that. That might be the leading theory, yeah. though. I mean, we still don't even know yawns. It seems impossible, it, it seems impossible to confirm, honestly. But. Yeah, that's true. We don't even know yawns. You know, we just last week figured out why bugs are attracted to light. That's, really? Yep. I thought, it was I thought it was the moon. Uh, well, yeah, but what about the moon? Why are the bugs flying towards the moon? I thought they were using it for navigational purposes. That's true, but if you have a light bulb, why are bugs flying into it, right? Like, what Im what behavior does that imitate? I think it's, it's that since since they can't reach the moon, right? They they fly towards a point probably near it that's taking them somewhere they need to be. Right. But since they can re since they can reach a light bulb, they almost fall into a gravitational. But hole. I I think like a an analogous behavior if you were considering they fly towards they would just keep flying towards the moon until they couldn't because that's what they do with that's light true. light bulbs and lamp stuff what we learned actually yeah. is that they use light for orientation um so okay if you take a moth in an empty room and like put a light bulb in the middle of the room it will keep its back to the light because it's supposed oh. to use the moon you know to, so that it flies straight because as a bug it's kind of hard to tell what's up what's down and that kind of thing so bugs keep their backs to light and that's how they use it as a navigational tool um so light bulbs are usually like you know lamps or whatever on the side of a building the problem is there's a wall right. there so they just keep slamming into the wall trying to keep their back to the light um yeah ah. so it is navigation and they get disoriented because they're used to using the moon as a backdrop as, basically yeah like the, the moon is always above yes yeah, the moon, yeah you, if you keep the moon at your back you should be flying technically you know straight but the, the literally last week that study was published so that's, that's really cool that's the word even these things that seem like very obvious things we're still figuring out it's pretty cool yeah I wonder um I wonder if they got some cool like high speed f footage of that. Yeah, they did. They did. I was yeah. watching it. It's very cool. They did like frame by frame where you can see the bug actively trying to turn its back towards the light bulb. And so it sort of right. just ends up going in circles around it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Smarter every day. <laughs> Smarter every day indeed. All right. We have designed yeah. a fish. We think, done it. I think that is that is probably all, all we do for today. When it when it comes out. Let me know, and I, I will definitely be playing. And how am I going to find them? Are they just going to be in a random store? They will be in a random... They'll, it probably won't be a random store. Probably Community Commons okay. is where they're going to be, All right. mo mostly. They might be in Petrotown just because, you know, it's like small 
small fish. Okay. Just so I know where to look yeah. when I go to try and find one to make a, a bridal shiner tank, because I'll be making a bridal yeah. shiner tank. <laughs> yeah, make sure you got your... You'll probably want to have your tanks fully upgraded to get them. I'm not sure upgraded. how easy we're oh. making it to, okay. for people to get, get these. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I I'm, think I have some tanks that are fair, fairly far along. We'll see. <laughs> or else I can send you a safe game. <laughs> I've, I've done a few playthroughs at this point i think i think i'm on the way we'll see we'll get there awesome all right well let me know when that happens thanks for having me that was super fun yeah that, that was a lot of fun i was not expecting it to be as fun and interesting as it was and it was just nice to talk to you in, in general yeah this is the first time we've had a call so yeah, that is that true was, yeah that was also i sort of realized that right before i called you i was like oh wait i'm not doing like the normal thing i'm i'm talking to another human being here yeah, and I was like, oh, wait, I've heard him talk a bunch. He's never heard me talk. Yeah. All right, chat, say bye to Gord. Okay. Thanks bye. for hanging out, everybody. Yeah, that was incredibly cool. I was not expecting that, to be honest with you. I, I was like, okay, yeah, we design behavior. We like, I don't know, we choose a couple variables. We do this thing and then this thing. And it's like, no, it's actually incredibly in-depth. The, the amount to which that they can tweak an individual is crazy. I've never, I did not, I've gained a lot of respect for the development team. And the coolest part about that to me that maybe you guys don't realize, typically when someone's developing a game on like the developer side, that type of stuff is done in code. Like you expect that kind of, those little tweaks, those number variables, you expect that to be done in code. They have an active environment that they can change sliders. It's all nicely designed with a nice font and everything. You change the sliders, you actively see the changes as you do the sliders. So like, that's something that a player will never see. I mean, they're trying to work on making it for modifier, but for now, right? Like a player will never see that environment. That is coded entirely for them to work on the fish. That's incredibly cool. Yeah, I mean, it has to make it easier to adjust things. It's like, that's, I think that's how you know you have like a good company and a good game design company is that that is a lot of effort to invest up front to create that type of system that, you know, the developers can work within easier. It's a lot of work up front, but in exchange, it allows you to do things easier and more accurately and more technically and specifically. Um, you know, they're not taking the shortest route, the quickest or most necessarily efficient route to get to the final product that they wanted originally. They're setting themselves up for the future and possibilities. And I think that's pretty cool. Whoa.